Welcome to Circle of Hearts Radio. Journey with Grandmother Alaya as she enters her magical world of relics, sacred sites, and ancient crystal skulls. Meet with exciting trailblazer authors and individuals shifting the consciousness of humanity. Send her your questions to be answered on air on her monthly segment, Ask the Oracle. And now your host, Grandmother Alaya, in this sanctuary on the airwaves on Own Times Radio. The past energies of the past months has created so many changes in everybody and has created a great deal of changes in my life and journey. So having a few months ago, you know, been guided to say, okay, well, you know, once a month I'm going to, you know, put myself more out there. And it's a little confusing and a little bit hard to explain your soul journey when you're constantly changing you know i thought i put something you know behind me to rest only to have it come back up you know for me to look at something in a deeper level uh these planetary energies have caused almost like a life review for everybody and i noticed that you know i watched the facebook pages social media and I'm honored to be um, helping out in a beautiful group, Humanity Healing University Online. And I look at everybody and I listen to what they're, they're sharing and their thoughts. And it's really a key word that has come out is life review. But then when you look at everything, you have to sort of prioritize what's important. Is the past important? Is your past lives important? Um, but I think we've entered a space of the now. So it's sort of integrating all that you were, not getting stuck into some of the old patterns that keep repeating themselves, which is retrograde. It's wonderful for bringing out. But... Um, looking at everything, seeing where you were, what you've learned, and where you are now. Because it seems to be a cycle of almost death of the old. Death is a scary word, but that just means ending. An ending of the old and being rebirthed into something new, like the phoenix, a perfect example. Uh, the fire, the ashes, and emerging new, or the butterfly, going into a cocoon, uh, a safe space to reevaluate, uh, reevaluate your life, and then you emerge. Um, and this is what's really happening to everyone. So putting out this, my soul journey and questions and answers. And you'll see more of that coming September because uh, the other months I have something already, wonderful people scheduled. But I think it comes to the point of you saying, well, who's she? Who's she to answer my questions? And I can honestly say in my 67 years, I've experienced many, many things. So in some way, I've walked in those shoes of experience. So what I share with you, and I, you will often hear Charlie Ripperman and myself when we have our heart to soul talks, we always say we're not teachers. We don't need followers. We're just somebody that have walked these paths and having experienced it, which you gain a lot of knowledge from the challenges of life. And, you know, we're still here. So, you know, let's share this. Because I think that's, you know, the key word in this life is sharing. Now, my soul journey. Hmm. 
to give, I don't even bother going into this because uh, I guess it doesn't hurt to see where I'm at or, you know, to maybe take a little time to get to know me because, you know, I'm not a person that's known. Oh, in certain metaphysical crystal skulls and relic forms, yes, I have a presence because of the things I've, you know, I have learned and that I've shared. And the mass media is, no, I'm just a voice. So let me call me a voice, an old voice of experience. You know, the, the grandmother that you um, come to visit and she sits and shares her stories. And you might say, oh, I can relate to that. You know, it, it's a loving support. So what I wish for you to do, you know, when you listen to the show or come to the space, think of it as just someplace comfortable. Come in, have some tea. You know, I wish I could invite you all to my house and we, we just sit at the table and talk. But since that's physically impossible, I've been uh, blessed to have my sanctuary on the air. And this is my space where I get to talk to you all and to share. And, you know, I've heard rumors in the future that, we, you know, we might have a call online. So then wouldn't it be wonderful if you could just call up and talk to me or talk to the guests that I have at the time? Well, we keep that in the future and see how that develops. So believe me, it's not easy. It, it's very easy when you have a guest and you can interact and change ideas. But all of a sudden, when you know, you're talking just on the radio yourself, it's like, a, oh my heavens. <laughs> so I have all my notes here. But I, I guess start at the beginning. You know, I have a little bit of time before break. And I'll see, you know, where we get with this. I was one of the 49ers, a wave of people that periodically, periodically come in to probably um, shake humanity, part of the 60s generation. You know, when I was, uh, the timing there was going in from, you know, uh, my teens to high school, where, you know, we saw the world through those colored glasses. We wanted to be of service. We wanted to change the world. We wanted that uh, golden civilization that we know that could exist. And then, as of the, and then we became adults, and we lost the vision because you know being a, a hippie as an adult is is doesn't work. You know, you have to come down to reality. You have relationships. You need to survive. But it's something that stays in your heart. So I had, you know, I got married. I had my two beautiful daughters. And, uh, you know, went through, you know, relationship issues and raised my daughters by myself and constantly reinventing myself. And as I'm reinventing myself, my spirituality is coming to the surface. It was there as a child. I saw things, talked to beings, otherworldly beings. Um, people that passed on, you know, a lot of interdimensional communication. But being a strange child, according to my parents, all I kept on hearing is be quiet. People are going to think you're insane. So this is a pattern I've noticed throughout my life that I keep repeating. Every time I start to speak out, there's somebody there, be quiet. Don't say anything. No one wants to hear you. So, okay. I kept quiet and I kept, you know, reinforcing this, this blockage of the throat chakra of, you can't speak out. You can't be who you are. You can't help people. You can't tell them I see these energies around you. They, I can't tell people that I see angels around them, people who have passed. 
I can't connect the two. I worked with the police in my younger days with um, people that were murdered, seeing their spirits, helping, you know, the police find find the people that needed to be found, you know, to be resolved for this crime that they did. And constantly in my relationships, be quiet, don't say anything. And this is the pattern that kept on going to age 49, which is interesting. I came in 1949 and at age 49, they discovered I had this massive brain tumor right on the back um, of my neck, the seat of the soul, the throat chakra, huge, 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 huge blockage that I went in surgery for. Now, technology now, the, even in 1999, wasn't as advanced as now. So when you had an operation, it was almost primitive compared to what it, it is. And even though the doctors were wonderful and my husband wasn't guided to uh, bring in people to monitor nerves and everything else so the doctors didn't cut the nerves, I still ended up with huge amounts of damage. And we're almost going into the break and I will, you know, I'll go further into my decision to come back and we'll take from the second part of my story on. But the brain tumor, I mean, I've had several, what they called NDEs, maybe two or three as a young person where was, I was on overload. I, you know, I didn't know whether to just stay or go. I developed illness, I developed towards suicide. Many, many things, you know, occurred. That's why I said I'm really in a position to understand what people go through now because I've experienced it myself. And here we are at the break and we'll continue from bringing you the best of the conscious minds in the world. Om Times Radio, your conscious lifestyle on steroids. Om Times Magazine is one of the leading online content providers of positivity wellness, and personal empowerment, a philanthropic organization. Their net proceeds are funneled to support worldwide charity initiatives via Humanity Healing International. Through their commitment to creating community and providing conscious content, they aspire to uplift humanity on a global scale. Ohm Times, co-creating a more conscious lifestyle. Circle of Hearts Radio is a sanctuary on the airwaves. Join me, Grandmother Aliyah, in the circle on Sunday, 2 p.m. Eastern, as I share information to both enlighten and nourish your soul. Do you want to be a better communicator? Do you want to better connect with the important people in your life? Do you want to enrich your relationships? If so, join me, Matthew Cooper, on the Positive Control System Show every Wednesday evening at 11 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Ohm Times Radio. I'll meet you there. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. Free your mind. Expand your soul. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Well, I'm back and I'm trying to share parts of my journey with you so you can see basically that when I do, you know, um, share things with you or express things or, you know, comments, it's because I've walked in their shoes. And I think that's important because there's so many people, and that's part of their path. You know, they have this brilliant book learning, you know, that they've learned all this. But until you really had the experience, it, it takes on a whole different outlook 
because you're you're reaching out, you're, you're feeling the emotions of other people going through that. So, you know, we can relate, you know, we're aligned in that. So, getting back, and like I said, this is really not that easy to do. <laughs> and when I reached, at the age of 49, 50, I had that, what they call the near-death experience as a result of a massive brain tumor that they removed. And in the removal, they had destroyed so much of my nerves that my left side was non-functional. You know, I have visual impairment. I have the paralyzed face, which on the left side, which makes it very difficult to enunciate. And I always kid with my guest, uh, if I don't say something right or I don't say your name right, just jump in and say it because some days I just find it very hard to talk. So after the operation is, you know, when they basically had told my husband, okay, uh, get all the paperwork get her all her paperwork, you know, and everything done because if she survives the operation first. And if she comes out of it, uh, expect a vegetable. Well, I'm a stubborn old goat, you know, I'm listening to these doctors and I'm going, yeah, this is not going to happen. You know, I'm going to have the operation, they're going to remove this mass and I'm going to come out of it because I'm not ready to leave. But, you know, I don't know whether I, and they kept on saying, you're in denial, denial, denial. I didn't get along with the doctors too well at that point. And, but I think that kept me going because I wouldn't own this tumor. I saw it as a blockage, you're going to remove it, and I will heal, and I will continue. And I think that's why I'm still here today because I didn't take in all the negativity that they were projecting. I mean, when you hear, oh, well, if you, you know, if you do come out, that you're going to be on a ventilator, you're going to be a vegetable, you're not going to know anything, your family's going to take care of you, I'm going to put you in a nursing home. And all this, and I'm going, no, 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 no. And I was very lucky to have my husband, because he says, no. This is not happening. You know, she's not going to get a nursing home. I'm going to make sure that she's fine. She'll be at home and, you know, we'll take care of things as best I can. Which was meant a great deal to me. And um, after the operation, I remember being on this vent in the hospital scene. And it, it was scary. Now, I was prior one of the, the things, jobs, experiences I had for many years, I was a nurse and I went into hospice nursing and taking, you know, taking care of people seriously ill and also people that were in transition. And as a, the caretaker, you perceive things and as being a psychic caretaker, you know, you see the transition process and whole different eyes but then coming out of the operation and being the patient that's a whole new world because sometimes a lot of things happen that you don't see in the hospital as far as caring goes but we're not going to get into that i managed to get through it but when I got out of the hospital, like I said, left side didn't work well, brain, words, you know, I'm thinking, you know, to, to put out, coming out as jumbled, um, hand coordination. Basically, it was like being reborn as a baby. You had to learn to talk and eat and function and remind you only one half of you worked. You're trying to get the other half working. Really a big mess. And I had asked my husband, can I have a computer? And he's, Hank, it's wonderful. Never, you know, whatever you want. 
got me a computer and I decided, well, this is, I'm going to try to get my brain to send signals to my hand. And, you know, I'm going to learn the computer, which I had no idea about anything. And it was quite an experience. I found out there was things as viruses, attachments. And I, I destroyed, I think, maybe three modems in this process. But learning the computer and trying to coordinate hand actions to thoughts and everything, this is... It was very helpful to me. So even nowadays, when you see anything written by me, I do try to be very careful. Or I have somebody editing recently a lot of things I write. Because just my brain still comes out, the words come out as major typos. It's like a different language or uh, dyslexic. And if people don't know, they go, you know, doesn't she care? Well, according to me, the way I'm seeing it is perfect, but how it comes out is a whole different story. So I've learned to be very compassionate. I was compassionate before, but I've learned, ext learned extreme compassion for people that have had any kind of brain trauma. So even being uh, on the radio and learning all this technology, it's I have a wonderful support in OWN and its creators and, you know, they're always backing me up, you know, and helping. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here today on the radio. I would probably cancel all the shows or destroy something. But anyway, that's another story. Well, what I want to come out with was the life change after the near death. When I came back, I was given a, I don't know people. What's interesting, every near-death experience is different. Everybody I've talked to, and I'll have a few more people on different shows, No, there's no uh, cookie-cutter example. It's a very unique change in perception. When I came back, I was a different person. I mean, prior to that, you know, I was a, a, a mother, a single mother, before I married my husband, uh, with my children growing up, becoming a nurse, and this was my focus. I come back, and I enter the world of ancient relics, ancient history, and bringing over, bringing back uh, ancient temple pieces, crystal skulls, energy tools. A really a very amazing experience. And I knew what to do with them. Now, this was totally different than my prior life. And I became very involved in this um, remembering part. A little bit difficult in my family because, you know, many times they're looking like, you know, who is she? <laughs> really? This is not the person we knew just a few years ago. Is this the result of some kind of medication thing? And what's interesting, I don't take pharmaceuticals. So they couldn't blame it. Well, well, you know, she's high on some drug or not. Yeah, I'd be very conscious of what I took. Even in the hospitals, I used to drive them crazy. Oh, here, here's the Demerol. Here's the Percocet. And I go, no, just give me a Tylenol. All right, if you want to suffer, go ahead. Here's the Tylenol. But this is the direction I went. I wouldn't get involved in that. And in a way, that helped because when I started going into this um, ancient history or mysteries idea, no one could say, well, she's high on something. This is just knowledge that was being brought through or that I was remembering. It was like I was in integrating a different part of my life. So you've seen that reflected on some of the shows that I have with these these wonderful speakers um, on the ancient mysteries that I can relate to them because inwardly I know about those time periods inwardly, intuitively through energy relics I have 
maybe past lives I've been there. So this is part of really what I've been showing you on the show when we bring these things forth is that I can handle my own because in my own intuitive way, I done my research by sharing part of my own experiences. So having that, that major NDE at the age of 50 turned my life around. And I went through, I started some forms. You know, this was purely through guidance, uh, constantly this inner voice saying, do this, do that. And I felt it was right to do it, which was unique experience because I didn't know, am I losing it or is this some kind of spiritual path going on? So after the many forms, and then there was uh, a prior radio show that had given me a little bit of background speaking in public because I'm a very private person. I'm one of those hermits that you would have found in a cave, but I was, spirit is kicking me out. And then through synchrony, I made contact with own times and the wonderful Chris and Leonie Puck. And so, ah, oh, you know, we're on the same page what we want to do here. How can I help? Well, you know, do a show, you know, do what you know. And I'm thinking, oh, great. <laughs> But it has, you know, I constantly have been learning and sharing. And, you know, once a month, um, I have my co-partner, Charlie, and we'll get back to that. Feed your soul with waves of consciousness on Ohm Times Radio. Have you ever wondered how to change your love paradigm? The secret key is finding a love partnership, not just a regular connection. How do you find these? Through conscious relationships. Ascending Hearts Dating is a dating site for people like you that believes in second chances and a different type of spiritual connection. Try Ascending Hearts for free today at AscendingHearts.com and change your love paradigm. Ascending Hearts, the premier dating community for the spiritually awake. Hi everyone, this is Shay Parker, the host of Best of the Best, which airs live right here on IOM Radio every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern and 5 p.m. Pacific. I'm super excited to bring you expert guest hosts, spiritual discussions, free psychic readings, and so much more. I can promise that you will not want to miss this one-of-a-kind, fun, yet touching, down-to-earth show. Join us every Tuesday night at 8 p.m. Eastern, 9 p.m. Pacific on OTRFM. This is Shay Parker, and I can't wait to see you there. This is Terry Van Horn, and I want to invite you to join me for my weekly radio show, Hailing Light, on Ohm Times Radio every Wednesday at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. On Healing Light, we want to bring love, light, and blessings into your world. You can find out more about us at www.healinglightonline.com. Blessings. Being a radio host on IOM FM allows you to build your show on a rich platform with the power of the Internet to fulfill your outreach goals and connect with a very specialized and global online audience, unlimited by time and distance. Ohm Times Radio will provide you with web relevance, a recognizable conscious brand, and with the standard of excellence that has accompanied every single Ohm Times endeavor. Host your show with Ohm Times Radio Network. The best of holistic, spiritual, and conscious world. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Uh, well, I'm back. 
in the saga of Elias' soul journey, which gets a little complicated, but it really reflects in some ways, if you look at your own life review, different parts of your own journey. Maybe you haven't experienced the same, some of the things I have, which is great. That's not part of your soul contracts or challenges. But if some, I think it allows you to see other people and see what they're going through. If you hear a firsthand experience, you, you tend not to make judgments on that person. I know that, uh, again, through synchrony or through guidance, I've, I've really run into many people, uh, part of a soul family, and we're coming together and working together in many different directions. But ultimately, it's to help others. When I started to remember parts of my past and um, that inner voice, maybe it was my higher self, which was all part of this descent into the physical body. I was told to use the signature energy of the name Alaya. Now my birth name is Linda, but after 50, I heard use this name because it, it, what it actually means is one who shines the light on the path. Now, my early years, I went into a deeply into esoteric learning uh, through certain mystery schools. And that's where I learned really of being of service to others. So Shining the light on the path does not mean I am a leader. It does not mean I need followers. It means walk with me. Let's walk together. Well, if I light the way, is so if we fall, we'll fall together, but we'll pick ourselves up and we'll continue on. So it's just the sharing of the light of your souls, of coming together and understanding each other. That's what the name Aliyah means. And people have come to know me by that. And I've tried changing my name back. Okay, my name, you know, regular name, what name is Linda? And no, we like Aliyah better. Okay, so here we are. I just wanted to, you know, explain that part. Um, in meeting my soul family, as I learned even so much from the people that I'm guided to ask to be on the show, like just recently, you know, I had Robert Schwartz, you know, I read his books years ago about soul contracts, the people crossing your path or, you know, you have some lessons to learn or else goals to achieve. And this is kind of where I'm at right now. I mean, I, I've learned many things from many people through very, some very challenging experiences. But right now, it seems like I'm in this little circle of, uh, you know, we all have the same vision. How can we aid others? And one of the people I met, actually, it was in a Crystal School conference. Is Charlie the Riverman Bergeron. Now, Charlie and I, again, share a, a very close birth date in March. We're both Pisces. And, you know, we have a way of talking and almost reading each other's mind. It, it, it's really kind of funny. That's um, so when we on this show when we do shows together, Heart to Soul Talks, you know, we don't discuss anything prior to say, oh, maybe a month before, what do you think? And we'll, you know, we'll come up with some ideas and then we leave it at that. And sometimes a few minutes before the show, we change it completely. And we just banter back and forth. Maybe it's part of a telepathy where a spiritual message. We don't know, but it seems to work. Um, and it's not teaching anybody. It's just sharing some ideas so you look at things different. Own times, 
uh, network, uh, a very developing large media network, putting out, helping to put out ideas to people of many diversities. You know, everyone can find something in this media. You know, from day-to-day -day business, from, you know, ideas on spiritual business, on different cultures, on questions that they ask. They're putting out the information there. And this is part of the soul group of people gathering and interacting with each other and helping each other. So even you, the ones, you know, if you choose to listen, realize you, you've listened to any of the shows which are remarkable because there's something that draws you. And in listening to others, you make your own choices. Now, Charlie and I have, and I have talked about this word choices a lot. <laughs> but again, you make you hear something and you make your choices where you want to go with it. Now you may say, where does that word choices come in your soul journey? Well, it seems like constantly I'm making choices and, you, you know, should I go here? Should I go there? If I do this, what's going to happen? If I do something else, what happens? And sometimes guidance just does it for me. Today on um, the Humanity Heal... Healing University Online, you read one of the administrators, she put out a saying, sometimes the door closes on part of our lives, not because we fail, but because something tells us that this no longer fits our life. And it's time to move on. So lock that door, shut your tears, and when you're ready, turn around and look for a new door that's opened. It's a sign you're no longer the person you once were. It's time to change into who you truly are, and it's going to be okay. A, wonder, a wonderful message that is, because so many of us have found, even myself, I thought, okay, I'm heading in this direction. This is what I'm going to do. This is what the show is going to do. You know, I'm releasing part of all the ancient mystery parts. Something didn't work out. And I thought, okay, that part's over. It's time to move on. And then I decided, okay, become more personal. Interact with people. Okay, don't know how that's going to happen. But then we see there's talk. Maybe there'll be a call line. I put out a newsletter. Write me at aliafresh at gmail.com. It's a, a work in progress. But, you know, we're putting it. I'm putting it out there, you know, here. I'd like, I want to understand what you need. What can I do for you? I'm not looking for ratings. Never did. I really am interested in people. And what, because I'm constantly, constantly learning from people. And I'm not saying I'm learning from PhDs. I'm learning from people that have, experiences in life and what do you talk it, it, it's this great expansion you go oh this is what we came to share this is how we came to help each other this is what a soul journey is and by trying to explain parts of mine i'm hoping you're looking back you'll look back at yours and see where you were and where you are now. And which, after all these planetary retrogrades, which really shook us around, I think the purpose of them was to constantly bring up patterns that we, we keep on stuffing down. Now, I don't want to deal with this now. But the last few months, it's come to the point of no choice. You're going to deal with it. You're going to see it. And you're going to either just acknowledge it, see what you got to learn from it, and now you can move on. You know, the more we stuff it down, the more it keeps on coming up. So you may as well face it. Face your fears. What's fear? 
misunderstood energy because as a soul fear is only emotion of fear is something that you don't understand so we talk about things you break through that darkness you break you, you can see that light again that sense of rebirth and in this world of total chaos your part of being a soul is to try to understand what's going on in your life so you can simply maybe reach out to somebody whether it's on the internet or whether it's a neighbor or a child and say I understand where you're coming from how can I help and collectively can you see this as all the you, yourself as like a little shooting star breaking through this vast veil of darkness all these holes of light popping up and what happens the, the darkness the chaos all that negative energy disappears and what do you have left people reaching out to each other this is the purpose of what we came back to do all of you not just me but all of you who have as they say eyes to see or ears to hear this message this is your purpose in life all the other stuff is just ornamental stuff or things that you want to experience your true heart's purpose is to be a light and to understand who you are and to reach out to others because you realize they're the same as you different stories but the same I will be back with the last segment very soon Free your mind with Ohm Times Radio, IOM FM. The number one reason girls drop out of school in sub-Saharan Africa is lack of access to feminine hygiene products. The Pads for School Girls Project, an outreach of Humanity Healing International, is changing this paradigm by setting up sewing programs at schools, teaching girls a vocational skill, while producing the reusable pads that help keep them attending classes. The girls pay it forward by making and giving pad kits to other girls in need. To learn more, visit HumanityHealing.org. Humanity Healing is where your heart is. Hello. Join us, Lisa Berry and Michelle Carter, every Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern Time for the Mindset Makeover, What's Possible? Get ready to become present, clear, and unstuck and start living fully, led by your heart. While you listen and feel this transformation through vibration of word, sound, and song, you'll open up to what's possible and experience your shift. Matt Connerton here. Join Jen Coffee and I twice a week for Matt Connerton Unleash, a political talk show that's a little different than what you're used to. No liberal or conservative agenda here, just an honest dialogue about truth and how things really work in the world of politics. Matt Connerton Unleash every Tuesday and Thursday night at 11 p.m. Eastern on Ohm Times Radio. Host your show on IOM FM, the radio network of Ohm Times Media one of the more recognized brand names in the conscious community and is backed by the extensive marketing reach of Ohm Times. Hosting a show on IOM FM immediately connects you with our extensive, dedicated community. The future of Internet radio is here. Ohm Times Radio. IOM FM. Talk a lot. <laughs> And the show is almost over. In a way, I'm glad because I'm going, oh, how much can I talk before boring all of you? I think in the last segment, I just want to put out where the show is going. It's going to be, you know, we, in the beginning, it was sort of a graduated learning 
bringing out things from the past. Let's see where we learn. Where where did some of our ancestry come from? Maybe it touched some fragment of your soul and say, I understand this. I want to learn more. And that goes all shoots into journey, your own personal journeys of understanding. And then we came to the beginning of this year where we started saying, well, let's look at our soul's journey. And along with uh, Charlie, who has become a regular, you know, once a month, you know, I bend his arm a little bit on that one. Um, we share ideas and new perceptions that we're helping you see through our own journey and our own mistakes and things that we've learned ourselves and maybe we're saying new, we bring it out, we talk freely. And, you know, if you relate, that's great. If you don't, that that's fine. Maybe someday you will, maybe someday you won't. All is always okay, whatever you do, because it is your own journey. We're just here, if you're drawn to come here, to share things. Take what you will and know you're loved. This is a safe space to explore. But the show has transitioned into overall showing you different aspects of yourself, showing that how choices you make affect things, how words you say affect things. We want you to become empowered, but we want you to become conscious of what you're doing. Now, I've also had wonderful people on like uh, Robert Schwartz, whose books are known for, you know, he brought out the idea of soul contracts. I mean, whoever, who really brought that be before, helping people understand what is addiction, what is uh, suicide, a choice of suicide, accidents, people coming in with disability, it helps you look at everybody around you with different eyes. Then the last two shows, I have PMH at order, who brought in the idea of these young children having, in coming in as souls, having near-death experiences, how it changed them. It's not only adults. She brings in the aspect of this happens throughout different lifetimes. This is a soul choice, a soul rebirth. A cho you know, the, the soul constantly growing. And then in her other book, The New Children of the Millennium, these wonderful children coming in with all these talents, but our old ways uh, in dealing with them of, you know, let's calm them down. Let's stop their creativity. Let's give them drugs, which causes them not to be able to feel love. Can you imagine that? Not being able to feel or express love. And as adults, we're doing this because we don't know better. So it's this awareness that's important. She brings out that look at these children of, uh, you know, we all, you know, as parents or grandparents, they say, oh, we have, a, you know, young people who feel entitled or, you know, they don't get things. Well, we've done it to them. We have provided this pattern. And it needs to change. We need to bring them back, maybe to the old ways. And there's a lot of children that are reconnecting with the with the earth and the understanding and brilliant ideas of being environmentalists and all these things they are creating. And the children that are that trying to uh, take care of our children, we have given them drugs because. Uh, pharmaceuticals say this is the way to do it or school systems say you have to do this no we need to protect the children but educate yourself listen to these people look at the videos read the information this is the point I'm making out we bring the ideas out to you and now it's up to you to do something about them otherwise this is our future 
PMH at Water says, think about it. Our generation of our leaders, when these people, when these kids grow up, who can't feel, who can't survive on their own, they don't know what a plant is, they don't know how to feed themselves, we have to turn it around. So this is the focus of my show is going to be talking and at times bringing on different people who through guidance I'm just drawn to. I want you to hear their stories because everybody's story, it may be different, but there's a similar lesson being learned. And part of my passion, you know, someone is, you know, asks, how do you know what your passion is? Well, my passion constantly changes. It's pretty much the same of being in service. You know, maybe it might veer a little bit here, veer a little bit there, but the thing is choose something that strikes your heart, whether it be taking care of plants, the plant world, you know, um, our food products, the earth, the waters. For me, it's the children. It's an overall subject that's very strong in my heart. Um, to worry about the children that are coming in. So this is uh, part of my service, part of my passion to get information out to you. And you may not be drawn to it. Uh, for example, for me, um, getting involved with Healing Humanities International dot org albino project to see little children coming in who are brutalized by cultures. This is a pattern that needs to be changed through awareness. These souls came in with a purpose of love. To hear their story, you need to be touched. You know, we understand you can't change cultures from the outside in. It's this awareness and opening your heart to it, person to person, that will create change. Or people, anything with, with the, the children coming in the world, of or uh, people in need. It's like, open your hearts. So sometimes you hear me saying this and you'll go, well, I'm not interested in that. That's fine. But find something you are and do it. Because what affects one affects us all. You know, we're, we've taken too much of an isolated people, you know, and we really need to start reaching out to each other. So today I, I've given you something about myself. Some may say that's great. Some may say, eh, that's a bady old lady here. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I just ask you to open your hearts and if you feel the need to talk, I am here. And my, again, you can contact me at aliafresh a, at gmail.com. That's A L L A Y A H F R I S C H at gmail.com. That's my uh, addy for anything to do with this, you know, speaking or public media. And I'm here. You know, the, the sanctuary, the, the space is always a safe space and it's always respectful and there, there's no well you know listen do do it whatever we just present seeds of love out there and if you're ready if your heart it tugs at your heart some or it tugs at your mind some then follow up and it's the same with on times that you seen or all the projects these wonderful creators are doing, get involved. 
because the change in this world will be due to the changes in you as a person. Just think of this. Uh, every individual, doesn't matter what their situation, if they do something to change themselves, it's like that pebble effect. You, you create this ripples. And um, it's beautiful. This is what this world is really all about. And we all put that vision for you that no matter where you find yourself, everybody has hope and a vision. And we need to support each other in our vision of creating a beautiful world. And I really thank you for anyone, you know, who chooses to listen. And like I said, I'm here to be for be here for you in ways I can. And if I don't know some answers, I will always manage to find somebody that can aid me in finding the answers that you seek. But you need to make that choice of wanting to find the answer or to find the change. Know that you're always supportive. Well, it's the end of the show. I thank you in full. I think you'll be finding more of these shows in the beginning of the year. So we're a work in progress. But please know this door to the sanctuary is open. And I love you all. Have a wonderful week.